1987. I was a sophomore in high school, and by that time, I'd been riding road bikes seriously for about a year. I had a tricolor steel Schwinn Tempo with either six or seven speed Shimano 105, and I just installed my first set of clipless pedals, a pair of Time Sports. At that time, clipless technology was brand new, like less than a year old. So you might say I was a bit of an early adopter. Anyway, they were as heavy as they look, and the cleats were a weird combo of plastic and metal, so they beat the hell out of my mom's hardwood floors. I'm pretty sure I used those pedals for about 10 years before jumping to speed play and then landing on Shimano, which is what I ride today. All these years later, the Time brand holds a special place in my heart because these pedals were the first upgrade I ever made to any bike ever. And when I got my first real road bike around 1997, a Team Seiko Cannondale CAD 4, I was thrilled to see that the Coda branded carbon fork was manufactured by Time. And then out of the clear blue sky in 2020, the guy who sold me those pedals in 1987 told me he just bought Time bicycles. No joke, I can't make this up. Not long after that, he invited me to be a brand ambassador and sent me a frame this bright red beauty, my Alpe d'Huez 01. I've been riding it for almost a year now, and I've even loaned it out to a few buddies, and we all agree. It's one of the most well-refined road bikes we've ever ridden. And the reason is simple. Time owns literally every step of the manufacturing process from thread to frame. Here's what I mean. Time is the only brand outside of Asia that owns both the braided carbon structure and the resin transfer molding processes. This allows time to control every individual strand of carbon used in the construction of a frame. They've been doing this for close to 40 years, and as a result, they've elevated the standard in creating carbon fiber to match the level you find in a Formula One car. There are two key acronyms to remember here, BCS and RTM. BCS stands for Braided Carbon Structure, and it's time's process of weaving braids of carbon fibers into complex, bi-directional textiles of fabric. And since they're weaving the fabric before it's impregnated with resin, they're able to tune it with different materials. They currently choose from 16 filaments to perfectly tailor the carbon layups. The important thing to remember is that this process allows something that is unheard of in the cycling world, continuous, unbroken fibers that run the full length of a tube or structure. And when the fabric's ready to move to production, Time employs resin transfer molding, RTM, to minimize defects in the composite. By injecting the resin under high pressure between rigid external and internal molds, air pockets are pushed out and voids between layers are eliminated. That means the resin can only flow where the precise molds allow and only assume shapes that are intended. Meaning, RTM quality is extremely high tolerance, uniform and consistently yields a beautiful finished product. I've seen just about every frame under the sun cut in half, and time is the only one that looks as beautifully finished on the inside as it does on the outside. And all this fine tuning translates into a ride quality that can best be described as refined responsiveness. Tons of frames have one or the other or a mix of both, but typically when you tip the scales in the favor of responsiveness and stiffness and low weight, you lose refinement, which to me includes things like ride quality, compliance, handling, and comfort. So by that definition, a bike like a Pinarello Dogma is all responsiveness and very little refinement, unless you let some air out of the tires. By contrast, the Pegoretti Marcello is certainly responsive, but mostly refined. The Alpe d'Huez is the first bike I've owned in a long time that creates an almost perfect balance between the two. It corners and descends like the Dogma and screams uphill like my old Cervelo R5. But when things slow down or it gets bumpy, the bike isn't harsh and unmanageable, making it really easy to stretch my rides out past four and five hours. And because it's tuned for refinement, it's also super versatile. I ran it with 30C tires and my shock stop suspension stem for BWR and loaned it to my buddy with the same setup for our annual gravel training camp here in Temecula. That's a, a camp where we get together every January, and across four days, we do around 250 miles with 25,000 feet of climbing. The mix of terrain is about 70-30 road to gravel. Quick side note, don't run 30s with this frame unless you don't mind scraping off some paint. 
28s are really about as big as you need to go. And if you need something bigger, the new ADHX uses all the same tech with all road geometry and clearance for 38s. It's obvious that I really like this bike, but to prove it, I wanna cite one thing, and it's kind of a big deal. After six months of owning the Alpe d'Huez, I sold my beloved limited edition Cervelo R5, which is a bike I swore I'd keep forever. Nothing I rode ever came close to that R5, but after one ride on the time, I knew the R5's days were numbered. I found a good home for it back in Arkansas, and the time's so good that I have zero regrets about letting it go. Thanks for tuning in, and if you'd like to learn more about Time, feel free to drop a comment below or visit their website at www.timebicycles.com. Full disclosure, they gave me a frame to test at no charge and helped me hire a camera jockey for the beautiful footage you saw in this video. But these opinions, well, obviously, they're all mine. Take care, and I'll see you next time.